Well, good morning. Oh, last night I saw that uh, it was coming down real hard. And actually, I saw today that uh, today's the closing ceremonies for what the Olympics or something. Is, is anybody follow the Olympics? Yeah. Okay. Because I watched like two hours of curling on Friday. I didn't know that we had professional shuffleboard in the Olympics. Because that's really all that is, isn't it? I, I, don't, I don't get it. And that and uh, what was the other one? The uh, skiing while shooting a bow. I don't, do they still do that? Yeah, because I don't understand that one either. That the, there couldn't be two things further apart as skiing and bow shooting. I mean, you might as well have like professional swimming and strangling. You know, that's an old Jerry Seinfeld joke. I don't know if you know that, but uh, anyway, it's weird. I'm not really into the whole Olympics thing, but I know a lot of people are really die hard into it, and uh, that's great. And uh, we should support the USA and everything they do. And congratulations, of course, to the uh, first American curling champions. I guess if you call them champions or whatever, gold medalists. Um, I heard they had won, so that was that's fantastic. But uh, anyway, we're continuing and ending our hot seat uh, series today. Uh, we've talked about some difficult things. We've talked about uh, grieving. We've talked about uh, sexuality. We've talked about a lot of hot topics. The thing is, is there is a lot and a lot and a lot of hot topics out there. We could do this message series for months and months because there's always something that's at the tip of everybody's tongue that we want to talk about. We try to hit those as often as we can, and we will come back to those things. So if there's a really hot topic or something that you're interested in that you may or may not have heard, we will come back to this. Uh, there's a never-ending supply of hot topics to talk about. Uh, but today I want to look at something that I think affects us all regardless of where we are, um, regardless of our position in life, and that is materialism. Uh, materialism is something that I think we all take part in. We really don't have much of a choice in some cases. We, we have to own certain things. We have to have certain things. And when you hear materialism and you hear that word, it really sounds like we're talking about somebody else. When we always hear the word materialism, we always think that we're talking about somebody else that has a problem with stuff. And we never really you know, equate that to ourselves. We always hear that word and we kind of point at somebody else that has so much more than us. And we like to say that they have an issue with materialism. But in fact, we kind of all have that struggle, maybe at different levels. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I always played the if I were rich game. Did you ever do that? Did you ever think about what you could have, what you could get? Uh, when I was growing up in the 90s, there was an awesome movie that came out called Blank Check. Anybody see that with the kid who gets the blank check and then he gets everything he wanted? I mean, I dreamt for days that I would find a blank check somewhere after that. Because that kid got everything he wanted. He got to do everything he wanted to do. And that's what we kind of strive for, especially when we're young. We see all these people with everything, and we see all, everything on the media and everything in movies and TVs, and we really want that for ourselves. And we always say that, if I were rich, I would do this. Now that I'm older, it's uh, the lottery. You know, I, you know, I haven't played the lottery yet. I have not done it at all. Because I'm honestly, I'm honestly waiting for one moment in my life where I go, today's the day, and I'm going to go buy one, and I'm going to win. I haven't had that feeling yet, but I know when I do, that's why I'm waiting. That's why I'm not spending any money on it, and you know what? Good story. If I, if I, don't, if I don't ever do it, I never invested in it, so it doesn't even matter. I, I win no matter what, but we always do that. We always play the if I were rich game, and, and you know, if I win the lottery, I'd do this, and you think about all the things you could change and all the stuff you could fix and all the things you could take care of and the debts that you have. And, oh, and, and, then, and then I'll probably uh, give it to some people who also need some things. That's always a secondary thought to that, isn't it? We always think about what we could do with it, and then, oh, and uh, my favorite charity, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that they get a good lump sum of it as well. Because it's always something that's secondary. I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. If I could just get a thousand more dollars a week, I could do this for myself and for my family. And yes, those are noble thoughts, but sometimes those can really take control of us. We can really think about all that we don't have, and we really don't take stock in what we do have. And we want to get what we want to get, and we want to have the best of this and the best of that and the best of this. Because there's no reason to get a lesser version of it. And we get caught up in this cycle of wanting to have the best and wanting to have everything that we can. And you know, the funny thing is, is we never feel rich. With all the money that we get, with all the money that we make, with all the stuff that we have, with everything that we do, we never feel rich, right? They keep moving the bar. 
Every time we think we finally got the best computer, 13 seconds later, there's a better one. That's how it works. Every time you get the car with new features, there's another car with a better feature. Because they keep moving the bar. We keep thinking that if we could just get this, I would finally be in the category of richness. And then when we do get it, it's already a piece of junk. And our lives are just this struggle to feel like we're rich, to feel like we've finally made it. Maybe if I just had one less care in the world, I would finally feel like I was rich. I'd finally feel like I made it. Benjamin Franklin had this to say, which I think is great. Who is wise? He that learns from everyone. Who is powerful? He that governs his passions. Who is rich? He that is content. And who is that? Nobody. Because <laughs> nobody's content. There's always something better. I always feel like I got the short end of the deal. Every time I come in second place, I could have been in first. And we never take stock in the fact that where we are right now, what we have may be enough. I may not need any more than that. I may be rich right now, but there's something that I don't have. And if I had that, then I would be rich because we're never content. We never find that content feeling. It's very easy to do that in a world that offers us so much stuff all the time. We're always seeing something new. We're always seeing something better. And because of that, we never feel rich and we never feel content. And we're always disappointed. It has this to say in 1 Timothy. It says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Now, how often do we feel that way? How often do we look at what we have and we honestly feel like we've made it? We honestly feel like we've been blessed enough. I don't think we feel that way very often. I know some days I look at something that I wish I had, and that's the furthest thing from my mind, is contentment. But what's interesting about this verse here is it says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud. See, it's talking about people who are rich. And there's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having lots of things, unless, of course, those things control us. But the Bible takes a very interesting look at it to say we need to teach those people. We need to teach people who are rich how to be rich. And then when they are taught how to be rich, to not depend on it because it's unreliable. And when you are rich and you don't depend on your richness, then you realize that all you can depend on is God. It goes on and it says this. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. Like I was talking about earlier, we play the If I Were Rich game, and it's always about things that would make our lives better. And seldom, when it comes to getting more in our lives, do we first look at those who don't have. We always think that we're the ones that don't have. We always think that we're the ones that haven't been blessed quite enough. And the thing is, is when we get caught up in those things that are happening in our lives and we don't see them as blessings, something interesting happens. Craig Rochelle, pastor of Life uh, Church, said this, every blessing we don't turn into praise has the potential to turn into pride. You see, everything you have, every dollar you spend, everything that comes in, everything that goes out, all of the nice things you own, all the keepsakes you have, all of the garages you own, everything was given to you by God. And that's where we're at. We so often forget that. We take our checks where we get paid every week, we throw them in the bank, and then we go, man, I'm poor. We get paid for our jobs, we get paid to work, and then we still feel like we haven't gotten anything. Now, granted, we can become overwhelmed by all of our bills and our expenses and whatnot, and then our money does disappear really quickly. But some days I honestly think we would benefit from taking our check at the end of the week, cashing it into nothing but tens, and throwing them in the air, and experiencing our payday. That would be totally different, wouldn't it? See, now the money that we did for our work disappears into the bank, and then everybody reaches in and takes pieces of it. And then you go, where did all my money go? But at the very least, if we took our checks where we made thousands of dollars a week or we made, you know, hundreds of dollars a week or whatever it is, and we could hold it and we could throw it in the air, we could roll around in it like pigs. 
then we would experience the blessing that is our payday and our pay. And all of a sudden we wouldn't feel so poor anymore. But we get so caught up in all the bills we have to pay and the money doesn't exist anymore. It's just there and it's gone. And if we get caught up in that, if we get caught up in the fact that our check wasn't a true blessing, sometimes that can turn into pride. Sometimes we can think we did it. Yeah, well, you see my new boat over here? I bought that myself, worked real hard, three jobs. I never saw my kids for the first four years of their lives, but it was worth it. We take pride in what we've done because we feel that we've earned it and we've worked for it. Well, you know what? All the work that we did, the job that we had, the money that we gained, the boat that we ended up with, that all came from God. So today, I want to look at two things, some good news and some bad news. What do you want to hear first? You want to hear the good news first, the bad news first? And bad? Okay, well, we're going to do good because that's the way I have it here, so too bad. <laughs> we're going to look at the good news first. <laughs> we got two things today when it comes to being rich. We got some good news and we got some bad news. So I'll start with the good news. The first and probably the most obvious thing is this. You are rich. That's the good news. I'm rich. You're rich. You're rich. We're all rich. We are rich. That's the good news. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm not rich. Let me help you understand that you are. Because we're all rich. Sometimes we take things for granted. Sometimes we get lost in what we've done and the money that we've made. And we're so without at the moment that we think we're not rich. We can't possibly be rich. There's no way. But we are. We are rich. It says this in Ecclesiastes. And it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. To enjoy your work and accept your lot in life. This is indeed a gift from God. We have jobs. We have things that we do. We have money coming in. We have lots of money coming in. Like I said before, sometimes we throw it in the bank. It disappears. We never see it. We go, I'm poor. Because I never got to see the thousands or the hundreds or the whatever that comes in. And we really take for granted the fact that we've made money. We've done our work. And God wanted us to enjoy that work while we did it so that we could make money. And then be rich with it. See, the problem is with our richness is that we don't feel rich because we do this a lot. We take our money and we throw it in the toilet. We spend it freely and we start thinking, well, I'm, I'm not rich. I, I don't have any money. Well, you are rich. You're very rich. You have an unlimited data plan on your brand new phone. You know, the first iPhone X, the, the, the just most recent iPhone, you know how much that cost? A thousand dollars. For a phone to ignore people that call you. <laughs> and we had to have it because it was the best one. So we spent our $1,000 and we spent our extra $50 a month so that I can text people and I can look at pictures of cats while I'm driving down the road. <laughs> we have the most amazing technology and the most poorest of people. I have friends who I know have asked me to borrow money from them who come up to me and say, look at my new technological watch. Well, why don't you sell that before you ask me for 50 bucks? Because I'm not getting rid of that. That's my new watch. That's my new smartwatch that keeps track of my heartbeat. And if without it, I wouldn't know I had one. <laughs> we have our heating and our cooling. We get in our air-conditioned cars and we get in our garages that are also air-conditioned. And we run really quick from the garage to the house so we don't not experience the air-conditioning. And during the summer, we have it set to a nice, cool 43 degrees. <laughs> and in winter, we have it set to the Bahamas. Because we can, we have the money, we have it, we do that, we want to feel that way, we can't not feel that way. And then we get the satellite package with the sports package and the movie package and the package package. We get all these packages, we have these, all these extra expenses that we need. We can't live, I can't, I can't miss a game. Who misses a game? I can watch four at once because of this. We have to have that. And then we buy our $4 water and then we buy 16 different bottles of pop a day. And then maybe a $4.67 cup of coffee. You can make it home yourself. You know what's in that stuff? Coffee, milk, and chocolate. Go home and do it yourself. But no, 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 no. We got to spend $4.37 so I can smile at the person that made it and say thank you. And then tip them in the jar another $2. You see what's happening here? All of our money is disappearing into things that we just can't live without. You know the number one expense for people? The number one area where we consider wasted money? You know what that is? Want to take a guess? Bottom left. Eating out. Going to restaurants. 
That is the number one expense. We, we don't eat breakfast in the morning because we don't have time for breakfast. So then we grab something on the way. And then we forgot our lunch at home, so we buy lunch at work because we can't go through work without eating. And then when we get home, all our friends are saying, hey, come out with us and eat. And we go and we eat supper with them. And then when you're hungry, you don't look at prices. You ever realize that? You go to the restaurant, you see $9 for this, $20 for that, $15 for this. And you're like, bring it on. <laughs> and then when you're done, you get to go. You're like, what? How did that happen? Because we, we just do that. That's just our lives. We don't, we don't wash our cars with a bucket and a hose. We push it through an automated machine for $10. You see, we pay for the Hulu subscription. We pay for the Netflix subscription. We rent videos from Redbox. We do all of these things. We pay for our internet. We have multiples. We have all of these bills. And then when we have all of these extra amenities, we go, I can't live without those. We pay hundreds of dollars for internet so we can stay connected with each other. Let me tell you something. You can live without the internet, and it's good. Give up your phone for a week. Try it for a little bit. But if you have these things in your life, and we, we look at all of these things, and we go, I can't live without this. Yes, you can. We still have Amish people. That means there's hope. <laughs> because they live without all of these things. It's okay. You can go without your cup of coffee. You can go out, go without the extra package of cable. You can turn the heat up just a couple degrees over where you would normally be. All of this to say, look at where we're at. Look at what we have. Are we rich? I think we're rich. If you make $33,000 a year, if you make at least $33,000 a year, you are in the top 1% of wage earners in the world. If you make $33,000 a year or more. You are the 1% that everybody's yelling about. If you're making $33,000 or more. If you're making $80,000 or more, you're in the top 0.1% of wage earners in the world. Are we rich? Are we rich? Say this with me. I am rich. I am rich. I am rich. We make more than this. And yet, when we don't get the common things, the things that we can't live without, we start to feel like we're poor. But you realize there's people that live with less than $33,000 a year, and you may be that person too. But even still, if you have a job, if you're making money, if you're taking money in, and you're not sacrificing anything because, well, I just can't live without that, you are rich. I am rich. We are rich. What are we? Rich. We are very rich. And you know, the thing is, is we don't feel rich because we consume everything. There isn't anything we don't get. If we see it, we get it. And then after we get it, we think, hey, look what I did. And we leave God out of the picture at all. So now that we haven't involved God in what we've gotten, we take it upon ourselves to think that we did it. And then it loses its value very quick. Because now it's only because of us. We don't feel rich because we consume everything. And we do it very often. God has blessed me with more than I need. He's blessed all of us with more than we need. And for that reason, I am rich. Say this with me. God has blessed me with more than I need. I am rich. And I'm right there with you. We're all in this together. We're all rich. We really are. We just don't see it sometimes. We don't see it very clearly because we get caught up in what we want or what we need and we lose sight of that. But you know what? We live in America, one of the greatest countries in the world, where we don't have a lack of anything. And if we want it, we get it because we are rich. We are rich. So that was the good news. We are rich. You guys ready for the bad news? Ready for this? You know what the bad news is? We're rich. <laughs> That's the bad news. It's good news. <laughs> we're rich. Well, you know what? It's also the bad news that we're rich. We're just, we just, it's, we're just lighting the candle at both ends here. It's a great thing that we're rich. It's a great thing that we have money. It's a great thing that we have things. It's a great thing that God has blessed us with what we have. But at the same time, being that rich, living in this place, living in America where we don't have a lack of anything, Man, that is just some bad news. 
It has this to say in Luke. When Jesus saw this, he said, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Now, when we read this verse, when we read this, we always think it's talking about somebody else. Don't we? We don't equate ourselves to the rich person in this story. We don't think that's us. We think that we don't really have very much. We really think that we haven't quite made it yet. And that the rich is talking about those people that have eight cars instead of six. They have three garages instead of one. And all of a sudden now this verse no longer applies to any of us. But if you remember, just seconds ago, we all said, I am rich. Because we are. This verse that we often think is talking about other people, it's talking about me. It's talking about you. It's talking about all of us. It's talking about the fact that we live here with everything we have. We're never left wanting. We can stay up until 3 in the morning, and conveniently on the TV, there's a woman trying to sell me a knife that can cut through a shoe. <laughs> and you know what? I don't have any knives that can cut through a shoe. I better buy one in case I need to cut through a shoe. You see, we've gotten everything we need. We're getting it all the time. They're always offering it to us. We're never left wanting here in the great country of America. And that's bad news. Because here it's saying, how hard is it for the rich? How hard is it for you and me to enter the kingdom of God? You know what? It's easier to try and push a camel through an eye of a needle. That's easier than us trying to get into the kingdom of God. Why? So why? There's three reasons being rich is bad news. There's three reasons that we all need to look at ourselves here in this moment because we are all rich. There's three reasons why being rich is bad news. The first one is this. It's harder for you to depend on God. We have everything we need. We get everything we want. We're never left wanting. And you know what? There's so many people here that are rich that if we don't have something, we can ask somebody else to borrow it. And then we can get it. Because we're all rich. And you know what? When we have everything we want, when we have all the health that we want, when we have all the shelter that we want, when we have all the food that we want, all of a sudden, we don't need God anymore. What do I need God for? I got everything I need. He doesn't give me much. I got it. It makes it really hard for us to depend on God who is giving abundantly to all of us in this moment. We are rich because God made us that way and we take it for granted. And then when he's given us all these things, we no longer depend on him until catastrophe hits. And then we wonder where God is. And God says, I wonder where you've been. You've been enjoying all of your stuff. And you haven't involved me in any of it. And now you come to me asking and wanting. You see, it makes it very hard for us to depend on God in our struggles, in our problems, when we have more than we need right now. Because God becomes a secondary thought. If I run out of food, I go buy more food. And I fill up my refrigerator with it. I never asked God for that. I never thanked him for it. I just went to the store. I came back. And I had food. Yay me. I did it. But see, we don't involve God in those moments. And when we don't involve God in those moments, when we don't see that everything we've been given, some up to the level and then abundantly over, we just stop depending on him. And then the only time we ask for God to come help us in our lives is when there's something we can't do on our own. And then we look back at all the times we did it ourselves and we think very pridefully, well, that was me, but now I need God for this. And see, we enter a different place now where we're no longer depending on God for our stuff because we have everything we need here. It's harder for you to depend on God when you're rich. And we are what? All rich. Second thing is this. It distracts us from the true priorities in life. You see, when we're rich and we have everything, we seldom think about other people. Because it's very easy to just go inside after we're done with work. In fact, we got attached garage just for that reason. We pull our car in. We can shut the door behind. We can enter the house. And nobody ever saw us do it. And we don't have any priorities outside of life. We just stick to ourselves. We just stick to what we're doing. We don't worry about other people because I have everything I need. And occasionally, when we're feeling generous, 
like a king to his court, we say, ah, yes, give them some of what I've made. I'm guilty of that. We seldom think about what other people need because in the midst of us having everything, we're comfortable. We don't see the needs of other people. When we're distracted by our richness, we don't see that there are other people who are in need. We don't come to other people's help because, to, to their rescue because here we are in America where obviously everybody should have what they need. And instead, this discontentment that comes from owning things and, and being rich in the moment, all of a sudden, we realize that once we've gotten everything we need, that nothing has any meaning anymore. And we lose track of ourselves and our loved ones. And then we're lost to it. And we need to remember that even though we're rich, we have priorities to take care of those who have less than us, to take care of those who need our money, who need our sacrifices. There's plenty of people out there who don't have like we do. And in our richness, sometimes we can get caught up in that and we don't see it. So being rich is bad news because it distracts us from what really matters. Reaching those who don't know who Jesus is. Those who have everything or those who have nothing are equally important to entering the kingdom of God. And if we don't realize in and amongst our richness that it's our responsibility to tell those people about who Jesus is, we've failed. And we've become rich, content people who don't see the true priorities in life. So that's the second thing. The third and last thing is this. You have a greater responsibility now that we're rich. God has given us more than I need because I am rich. And because all of us here are rich, because all of us here have enough, because God has decided to bless us in our lives to have what we have, we have a greater responsibility. It says exactly that in Luke 12. When someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. So what God said was, that when you're rich, it's really difficult to get into the kingdom. In fact, it's easier to push a camel through the eye of a needle. It's really, really difficult. Why is it really difficult? Because we've been given a greater responsibility in being that way. Now we have this. We've been given much by God who's blessed us with more than we need because we are rich. And because of that, we have a greater responsibility that sometimes we can miss. We've been so adept at catering to our own needs that we seldom remember other people who have needs that aren't being met. And we have a responsibility to use our richness, to use our money, to use our gifts to impact people who don't otherwise have. You see, the amazing thing about Iron Ridge Church here is that we want to impact Northeast Iowa and surrounding areas. That takes money. That takes people. That takes servants. And that takes a rich group of people who understand the true responsibility of following Jesus. And that's what it takes. So how, how do rich people live? How do rich people live? Now, I know you have your ideas. I know we've seen people that we think are rich. You know, there's people that are rich that don't even think that they are. And we see people live that way and we have a really good idea of how we think people, how we think rich people live. But like we said earlier, it's this. 1 Timothy 6.18 said, tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Always being ready to share with others. Now there's a verse right after that. That I think sums up exactly why we need to live the way that we live as rich people. It continues and it says this, by doing this, by doing what was previously said, by doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Now there's two parallels there. We're taking all the richness that we have. We're taking all the things that we've been given above and beyond what we actually need. We're taking those things and not only is it storing treasure up in heaven, it's helping us develop a good foundation for a future in this world too. 
that leads to true life. Because if you're not controlled by your money, if you're not controlled by your stuff, if you're not controlled by the payments, if all of a sudden you realize that your life is a greater calling than just the things you can own and the money you can occur, now you move on to this, which is doing good things with those and helping people with that so that not only in heaven will you have treasures that are stored up, but in this life, you're no longer a slave to the debt collectors and the money, but instead you're using it to impact people's lives in ways that you've never seen before. And that looks like a lot of different things. Uh, my wife never ceases to amaze me. She always asks if she can pay for people's gas. She can always ask if she can give people money. And I'm like, no. And that's the bad side of me. And eventually, I let her do that, and she's blessed, and I'm blessed, and we help these people, and they're blessed, and all of a sudden, I'm not a slave to my money anymore. I've given it to somebody else. I've seen them be blessed by it, and we can do that too. If you don't have the ability to give your money to people like that, find some other way to do it to help other people out. Iron Ridge is doing that the whole time. Every time you guys donate money to Iron Ridge, that is donated to God. And then we use that to impact the community around us. Nobody here at Iron Ridge is trying to get rich. We're trying to use that money to impact individuals' lives. We give Christmas to people that don't have it. We give meals to those who couldn't make them. We help people as much as we can. We give the trunk or treat. We do the Christmas parade thing. We do all of this stuff because God has entrusted rich people to take care of those who don't have it. That's why Iron Ridge does what it does. And that's why you as an individual, when you support Iron Ridge, we impact our community because we will be a church full of rich people that are good at being rich at what matters most, changing lives, impacting communities, getting people in the doors here, not just so they can stare at some idiot giving a message, but instead that they can hear the true gospel of who Jesus is so their lives will be changed forever and they'll no longer have to be slaves to their money. They'll no longer have to be slaves to their stuff, but instead can experience true freedom in Christ who gave his life for a bunch of rich people. And it'll change and life will look new because like the verse says, by doing this, we will be storing up their treasures in heaven and on this earth as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. A life that you can't experience just by simply occurring enough dollars. But instead, by experiencing Christ in a way you haven't before, so that we will become a church full of rich people that are good at being rich at what matters most. So, are we a rich church? Say it with me. I am rich because God has blessed me to be that way, to help those who aren't. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing.